Hello everyone, I am Brian from Watch Complications. And every once in a while you've got to ask yourself, what's my favorite watch to wear? Or really maybe a better question is, what's my favorite style of watch to wear? Now, my favorite watch might change some over time, though I do find myself wearing a certain number of watches on a regular basis, but I certainly do have a favorite style. And what I want to talk about in this video today are simple watches, which are my favorites. So what do I mean when I say simple watch? For me, that just means that it has a very basic design, analog face, primary function is telling the time. There may be a complication, but it's really just about telling the time, it's practical, functional, and I can wear it without any sort of worry. Now when you think really simple watches, the category that that sort of gravitates toward is a dress watch. And a couple of these are dress watches, but they are not all dress watches. They can be worn in almost any context, and they are just simple watches. So what I'm gonna do is show you my five favorite simple watches. Some of these I've had in my collection for a while. Some of them are fairly new. Now each of the five watches I'm gonna show you share a similar aesthetic. They are all simple watches. And the other thing they have in common is that I can't stop wearing them. I love wearing each of these watches and I will continue to do so. So for an overview of these five watches, two of them are Christopher Ward's, two of them are Hamilton's, and one of them is a watch I made myself. For each of the watches, I'm gonna introduce them and then I'll show them up close also. So make sure you watch the different parts of the video so you can see them both from this perspective and up close. Watch number one is my Christopher Ward C65 Trident Classic Vintage. And I've had this watch for a long time. I love wearing it. It is sort of my go-to watch. If I want to quickly grab a watch, something I'm going to just wear around the house, even if I'm doing some work outside or in the garage, or if I'm quickly going out to run errands, this is the first watch I grab. I love it. And it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea because it is black PVD, but I think it's excellent and it's so simple, so well done. It does have a date complication, has a vintage look about it. It's got an automatic movement. You know which watches are your favorites by which one you're wearing the most. And this one gets worn all the time. This watch is on my wrist probably three, at least three times a week. And that might be parts of a day or an entire day, but this watch is on my wrist all the time. So again, for each of these watches, I'm gonna give you an up close look at it and also show it to you on the wrist. The Christopher Ward C65 Trident Classic Vintage. This also comes in a stainless steel with uh, a sort of a more modern look, but this is the vintage version in a black PVD. You can see it's the Trident Classic and very simple. It's got their twin flag logo on the crown. See there, very nicely done. I love the lugs and the design on, on these tridents. They're just a great style of watch from the 38s up to the 43s. They've got different sizes of like the C65, C65 Vintage coming out. But they all sort of follow a similar template for, for the design, although the newer ones are a little bit more uh, sleek, a little bit thinner. But this is just a great watch. This is one of their older versions. You can still find them. They have them in the sales sometimes. It's got a vintage loom and the classic sort of trident second hand. It's got a Soleta 200 movement in it, so it's got the date complication. Again, simple in terms of the analog face. It's just got the markers, the hands, you know, logo, not a lot of writing on the, on the face. Of course, the Christopher Ward logo is sort of a point of debate in lots of different circles, but I actually like it. It's modern, it's simple, and not that different from something like from the Hamilton. Now Hamilton, of course, is writing there is at 12 o'clock as opposed to nine o'clock, but same sort of a simple style that's done really well for a while. Now, this is the only watch in the group that has a screw down crown, so you just have to unscrew it before you can pull it out and you know quick set the date or uh, set the time but this is simple watch, easy to operate, easy to read in any light, and it's got the, you know, the raised sapphire crystal, and maybe if it was flat, it'd even be less susceptible to damage, but it's 38 millimeter, so it stays out of the way, and you can see this is one I wear all the time. It's like the, it just, the strap, it just goes right into place. There's no work at even getting it on the wrist at this point, point. Um, and this is the strap that came with it, sort of a vintage oak camel, and I wear this watch constantly. It is my go-to errand watch, like I said. It's got the logo on the clasp. 
And even though I wear it weekly, multiple days in a row, this thing has not seen any particular damage. It's done really well. So this watch goes with basically any type of casual clothing, particularly jeans and whatnot. My style of clothing, it goes really well with. And this is something I just wear constantly. It's one of my favorite watches in my collection. Again, wasn't expecting that when I bought it. And I have certainly got my money's worth out of it and continue to do so. Just an excellent simple watch that tells the time and the date. And I have zero complaints about this watch. It's done really well and I expect it will into the future. Watch number two. It's actually the watch that I had on my wrist when I started recording this video. And that is the other Christopher Ward. That is the C1 Small Seconds. It's not that old of a watch. I haven't had it for a great length of time yet. I love it. It's more in the dress category but it is simple. It does have a complication. It has a small seconds complication. It's on a sort of a light tan, light brown strap. It has Christopher Ward's in-house SH-21 movement, and so it has a nice exhibition back on it. Again, I'll show you this up close, but it houses a five-day power reserve, so it's a 120-hour chronometer. It's an excellent, simple watch, and it fits more than just a dress context. I bought this actually as sort of like a summer style watch. This will go with shorts and light colors like blues and yellow. It's just going to be a great watch to have through the summer. Simply tells the time and my favorite complication is a small seconds complication. It's just the best one. I love the small seconds at six. It has that and at some point, some future video, I'm going to do uh, an entire video on just my favorite complication which is small seconds and I'll show you all my watches that have the small seconds complication in its various forms. So the Christopher Ward C1 Small Seconds is watch number two. As you can tell, this is much more of a dress watch. It's their C1 case. It also has the twin flag motif. It has their in-house movement, SH-21, as opposed to C65, which had a very you know common solida uh, movement in it. But this is their in-house movement with a, a nice exhibition back. It's a high beat movement. So this is a chronometer, It's so it's COSC certified. It's one of the few I have that doesn't actually say chronometer on the dial, even though it has got a COSC certificate. So that means it keeps a particularly good time. It's got a 120 hour, five day power reserve. You can see there are twin mainsprings on this watch. When you wind, when you go to wind it, you can see that both barrels will turn a little bit. It kind of goes back and forth between them and the way they've got it set up but a very nicely engraved bridge and I'll sort of give you some other, other close looks of it here. You can see the, the logo here, Christopher Ward, and then it's got other information around the edges of the case and whatnot. You can see it's a nice slick C1 case. It's about 11 millimeters height and simple blued hands. I particularly like the opaline dial. It's sort of a grayish silver color, subtle texture, printed markers. When this particular watch came out, there's some, you know, wish back to the C9 version, which had applied markers, but actually I like the printed markers on this. It just adds to that simplistic feel. This one isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea because of the logo at 9 and sort of this emptiness at 12 o'clock. And also, it is my favorite complication, a small second, and this watch emphasizes it. Again, some people don't like the sort of oversized small second subdial but I love it because I'm a small second person and this emphasizes that particular complication. You can see that the central pins are very different on these than what you would normally see, uh, which is really kind of a cool effect if you ask me. And it does have balance. And you might think I'm completely off my rocker for saying so when it has that logo at nine o'clock like that. But I wanna give you a different way of looking at this particular watch. And that is when it's on the wrist so this particular watch has a different type of symmetry when your hands at rest on a table or you're typing on your laptop or your hands just resting on your lap. But notice from 10 to four, there's nothing on the dial. And then from four to 10, this direction you have the sub dial and the logo. And so this space is empty, this space is occupied. And so whenever you're kind of looking at it, it actually does feel somewhat balanced in a weird way. And that is that you have things on the dial on the lower half and you don't have anything on the dial in the upper half and it kind of just feels like a nice natural fit. And you know, when this is sort of tucked under your sleeve, 
if you're not a fan of the logo. It does sort of disappear when you're just quickly looking at the time, but I love it. It's simple. It's my favorite complication. Again, I bought this on sale so I would have a nice summer watch and I know that sounds strange. Yeah, it will look great with a suit, but this will also look good with a pair of, you know, khaki shorts and a, and a nice bright blue or yellow shirt and just sort of lounging around in the summer. And so I bought this to be sort of like a daily wear and I got a great sale on this. I got it like 50% off on a sale. So great value for the money and I expect that I will wear this quite a bit into the future. So this Christopher Ward C1 small second is an example of a small second done in a nice simple way. And I'm wearing this watch almost every other day. It's just beautifully done. I love, love, love this watch. Again, pictures of something like this won't do it justice. I was on the fence about getting this, but at 50% off, I thought I'd give it a try and it became an instant favorite in my collection. So watch number three is actually a vintage watch from my collection and it is a Hamilton Electric. The movement in this is not simple. It is a hybrid. It is a battery powered mechanical movement. It is the 500. It can be a little bit temperamental, but I love this watch. It is simple. You can see that it has a combination of stainless and gold in terms of the color. And I, I just love this watch. It just simply just tells it time. And again, the simple isn't about the fact that it's a hybrid movement or that it's quartz versus mechanical with any of these. It is about the simple analog face. This one just simply tells the time. Simple font uh, for the logo. This is just a beautiful watch. Uh, 1959. So this watch is actually a Converta 3 watch, but it has a Converta 4 bezel on it. And so it's sort of a, a hybrid Converta 3 and 4, and it's a hybrid movement but simple analog face, love wearing it. All right, so watch number three, let's talk Hamilton. And this is, again is a 1959 Converta 3 with a Converta 4 bezel. It has the original Hamilton Electric 500 movement in it, which I've had restored. So this watch was someone's 25 year gift for work. And I'll just say, I'm not gonna put their information on here just for you know privacy reasons, but you can see that this was a gift in May of 1959. And here is the classic Hamilton logo on the crown. And the crown is at four o'clock, which is something you don't see too many times on a dress style watch. You see it a little bit more on divers. So the crown is a little bit out of the way, you know, the wrist, but it's, it's a unique location on this type of a watch. The dial is a nice gold. You can see that the silver and the gold interact really well together. The vintage loom is in there. Simple company logo, Hamilton, which is of course carried through uh, since Swatch had bought the company. Now this watch is of course from the era when Hamilton was in Lancaster, PA in the US. Now of course it's part of Swatch Group, but this is sort of your classic vintage piece, which is nice and thin. This one's about 39 millimeter in diameter. What's really interesting about this watch is that it's very simple in its design, but the movement's a lot more complicated because it is a battery and mechanical hybrid. So whenever you push the crown in so that the leads make contact, you actually have to give a little bit of a shake to get the balance wheel moving and then it'll start ticking away and it has a very, very distinct uh, action. Let me just, I'll push the crown in and I've been moving it. So you can hear that a little bit. It's a very simple design, basically just the hours and the minute markers. And you know, this is something that's sort of a similar thing with these. You've got basically very distinct hour markers, 12 and 12, very different eras, very different designs and different types of movements, but they all have, you know, this sort of this simple design aesthetic. All right, so I pulled the crown back out so this will stop, but this is again, a simple watch. When I first thought about getting this and having it restored, I was a little bit concerned how much I would like the silver and gold playing off each other, but the band really brings it together. So I am not a yellow gold fan at all, and this is the only watch that has that sort of look about it in my collection. So I have this on an older Christopher Ward leather strap because they had sort of this brownish red, which I think goes really well with the color combination of the silver and the gold, and it had a, a gold colored clasp on it, and the Bader deployment makes it nice and simple to put on, and this color combination goes particularly well. 
with blue navy sort of sweaters and collars, which is what I'm wearing right now. So this collar combination looks really great when you're sort of wanting to be sort of semi-formal in terms of dress. This is a nice simple watch to wear to semi-formal events and it has a great story behind it, both in terms of who wore it, where it's from, and the movement, and just a great conversation piece. But above everything, it is simple. So watch number four is another Hamilton, but it's one of the newer ones that's in my collection, but I love it, and I'm wearing it around quite a bit, and that is the Hamilton Jazzmaster. Now, there are a lot of variants of the Jazzmaster out there. I will put the reference number for this one in the video details. It does have a date complication, but it's a simple silver dial. It has a lot of the same design elements of the much older 1959 Converta. So here I've got a more modern swatch version of the Hamilton, and then I have the vintage version. So vintage gold, simple design aesthetic. Modern, also that same simple design aesthetic and elements just done in silver and black as opposed to silver and gold. And I love this watch, it's just simple, it's quartz. Unlike the others we've seen so far, which are mechanical, really, even the Converta, this is the one quartz watch that I have in this sort of simple category that I really love wearing and just looks beautiful. Tells the time, has the date, really, really like this simple watch. And having the two next to each other in the collection, the silver and the gold, vintage, modern, kind of the same design, they look great. The most recent addition to the simple watches in my collection is this particular one, which is the Hamilton Jazzmaster. And again, I'll put the reference number since there are many of these uh, in the video information, but this one has a silver colored dial. So this right here is what watch collecting for me is all about. A vintage watch and a modern watch. The logo has not changed in terms of the font. These both have the same sort of design elements with the hour markers. This one has, of course, Hamilton is at 12 at both, and then this has Jazzmaster and, and Electric here. These are just design cues are all there. There's some heritage in there. You can see it through the decades. This is just beautiful. We've got the, the gold versus the silver, the vintage versus the modern, the hands match this brown versus black leather straps. I mean, these just look beautiful next to each other in the cases. And it's just, I'm just happy with this particular combo. They are, for me, again, what watch collecting was really about. But this one is a little bit larger inside. This one also has a Bader style deployment. It's got the logo Hamilton on the clasp. So I've currently got it on the strap it came with, but this particular watch looks really good on Canvas straps, NATO straps, being silver and black, it's pretty versatile, has a great look about it. This is about 41 millimeter, 20 millimeter strap. You can read more about it by looking up the reference number that's posted in the video information. So I'm not a huge fan of quartz watches, but I have, you know, I have plenty of them in the collection. I have, you know, my Casios and my Song Dus, and you can, you know, read about those on my blog, and I do reviews on quartz watches sometimes, but, but this is certainly one of the best looking ones really well done, high quality, and worth the price that I paid for it. It is just well done. So the Hamilton Jazzmaster, simplicity done really well, simple date window, and I love the logo on the crown on these, which is not all that different from what it was in 1959. Same logo. This one's got a nice sandblasted look and polished H, but just a beautiful, simple Hamilton combo. Watch number five is Glass 42. It is one of the watches that I've put together and built myself. That's actually something you could buy from me. It's in on my Etsy store and stuff, but all it is is a open case front and back. So you can see the front of the movement and the back of the movement. It's just a simple analog face where you can see everything in all its glory and just a pair of hands on on the movement. At some point I might do a style where I actually print on the movement holder that you can see around the edges of this. So it's a hand wound movement and different colors and options can be chosen for it but just a simple analog face, no markers, just tells the time. And 
I wear this again sort of as a go-to watch similar to the Christopher Ward C65 if I'm just gonna wear a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and do things around the house go run errands this might be one of those that I choose and finally I have glass 42 which I mentioned is one that I've put together myself and by put together it's really not too difficult all I had to do here was buy the components which are all from different places uh, I had to trim the stem you know choose the hands I wanted I've got a, an extra dial washer that's inverted to help keep pressure on the hour wheel but I put this together myself it's got an exhibition back on it so this movement is a solider movement it is in the same family as what's in this Christopher Ward C65. This has the date and it's an automatic movement. So this has a rotor in there that's spinning around with the movements of your wrist. And so there's no rotor on the back. It's just a regular hand wound movement, 42 millimeter. And we can wind it up, pull out the crown to set the time. And I don't have any markers on here right now. Simple analog face. Now, one of the things I intend to do with this series at some point is to use my pad printer to uh, print markers on the movement holder here around the border, which will give you some visual cues of the hour markers, but to print directly on the movement holder so that this is just visually the same in terms of being able to see the entire face of the movement. And then, of course, with the exhibition back, you can see the balance flow and all the other components of the watch. This has got a combination of sort of brushed and polished surfaces, so the, the bezel's polished, but the lugs and sides of the case are brushed, and then we move back to polished on the reverse, and it's got some good water resistance, 10 atmospheres, and I do different hand combinations on these, but again, just a simple design. This is, again, a daily sort of beater watch, if you want to call it that. It's held up really well. It's a flat sapphire crystal. So in terms of the, the crystals on these, the C65 had the boxed crystal, so it's you know raised. These are all sapphire. The C1 was slightly domed crystal. And then we got the vintage, which is also that sort of box crystal. Vintage watches usually have the boxed crystals, which is, again, nice. It's vintage. It's classic. And then the Jazzmaster Hamilton is slightly domed like the Chris Reward small second. So these two are the same, the two vintages are the same, and then this one is a flat sapphire. So I've got, again, lots of variety. And this is just a simple watch. I want to just tell the time, nothing else. It goes great with, you know, jeans and t-shirts, shorts, you know, sneakers, sandals. It's, it goes with anything, but this can also look great with a different strap in a dress setting also but this is one of my favorite watches to wear simply for just telling the time and i really like hand wound movements they really are my favorite one of the things i hope you're getting from this video is the variety wrapped up in this five piece overview one of the great things about simple watches is that they are sort of unassuming they're they're subtle they're sort of out of the way they can attract conversation they 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 have attractive color combinations I like to offset the face with a nice strap, but they are subtle and they're simple and they're there just to tell the time. And so what about the sizes in this group? There's actually a variety. And that's one nice thing is that simple watches can take on a variety of sizes. The smallest in this group is the Christopher Ward C65. It's only 38 millimeter. So it's very subtle, it's out of the way, making it a little bit harder to hit on things, which is nice. That's why it's a go-to watch. I grab it for errands and running around doing this and that. So that's a 38 millimeter simple watch. The next is the Converta, 1959 again. So back in an era when watches were kind of small anyway, this one's about 39 millimeter. So again, pretty small. Now I like large watches too. And my sweet spot's about 40 millimeter, 40, 41. But I love 42 millimeter watches. I have all the way up to 44 is about sort of my max, some of my Divers are 43. The largest is an aviation watch I have, which is 44. But 38 millimeter, 39 millimeter. And then we get to sort of the, the 40 millimeter category, which is the Jazz Master and the uh, Christopher Ward C1 small second, again, about 41 millimeter. And then the largest in this simple group is 
my glass 42. The reason why it's called 42 is because it's a 42 millimeter case. So this goes all the way from 38 up to 42 millimeter, which is really kind of the sweet spot for most people. It's somewhere in that category. And so there's something here that's a little bit of everything. And one of the cool things is how all of these look in a collection. And I'll show you all of these next to each other, which I think shows such a great variety of simple watches. So one of the things I'm hoping that comes through in this video is that although these are fairly simple from a design perspective, let's say, and I, you know, I have a hard time saying that any particular watch is simple, but on their face, they are simple analog designs. The richness and diversity and the variety that is here suits almost any occasion. It is a beautiful collection of five watches. I wear these constantly and it's just a beautiful representation of what's possible with just simple designs, simple watches. Sometimes it pays to keep things simple in terms of look and hopefully this shows you what's possible. Well, I hope you enjoyed this overview of my five favorite simple watches in my collection. I regularly wear these watches. There is hardly a week that would go by that I wouldn't have one of these on the wrist. Uh, usually in, in a week, I will have had almost all of these on the wrist at some point. They are simply my favorite style of watch to wear, simple analog face, and they give me the most joy when it comes to just telling the time. And so I'm Brian, this is Watch Complications. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram, and also check out my blog at watchcomplications.com.